Has the danger gone? Where is the risk? Where did it go? What happened to risk inside of zombies? Is it important to have risk for the gameplay loop inside Call of Duty Zombies? Does it increase replayability, the challenge of the game, the fun of the game? Or is it not essential as we get more tools to try and play the game as time has gone on? I want to explore those questions and really dive into the idea of the gameplay loop. Does the gameplay loop, that addictive nature we used to feel in Call of Duty Zombies, depend on a better risk system inside Call of Duty Zombies? We're going to answer those questions and more on today's episode of The Main. What is risk inside of video games? It can be as faint as the developers casting the illusion that your character is in danger, or as strong as forcing players to make trade-offs to progress to the next facet of the game you are playing. Is there anything riskier than the road not traveled? Is it worth it to try and gain this reward at the risk of losing it all? Potentially. But in the context of zombies, I have seen an erosion in the risk associated with each decision you make in-game. To run to get a gun mid-round used to be this huge decision to undertake, while in the latest iteration, the same risk might be recontextualized as, should I enter the boss fight without any preparation? These two tasks shouldn't have the same weight, but there's no denying how risky running for ammo is on Nocturne Tone at round 25 versus 9. Inside 9, it doesn't even cross your mind that you might put yourself at risk thanks to all the tools you have available. While the same thing can't be said, entering a boss fight in Ancient Evil, you risk a lot more fighting Perseus if you just go for it, giving a rush to players, but probably frustrating them if they end up getting destroyed. Players have been given more to start with over the years in the form of gobblegums, fate and fortune cards, custom loadouts, specialist weapons, specialist abilities, custom mods, perk selections, talismans, and weapon kits. Players have more tools than ever to defeat zombies, causing the player to feel more in control than ever before, even before they set a foot inside the map. The fundamental mechanics of zombies have been changing from tower defense to something entirely different. I am unsure what to label it, but the major choices are made in the menus now, opposed to inside the game. There is next to no incentive for players to do anything in the map when you can optimize your loadout in the menus. Taking your MOG all decked out on round one allows players to ignore wall weapons, the box, and getting wonder weapons because they can point build straight away. Players get all their perks, upgrade five times, and pick up a spitfire off the wall allowing them to be sent to round 30. Then it is a matter of getting the XM out of the box or finally tracking down a wonder weapon quest. BO3 Elemental Pack-A-Punch made things even worse by allowing any weapon with burnt out or dead wire to perform better than the wonder weapons in the game by and large. Without posing a threat while upgrading or getting any other serious tasks done, the addictive loop of gameplay fades away. Let's think about a scenario in a game of Doris. You were spinning the box at the catwalk. Ooh, risky, because you can get caught in that cage if you let the zombies get too close. You pick up a weapon from the box. Maybe your weapons aren't doing enough damage. Maybe you need to change things up. You feel pressure building, because if you get the timing just wrong when taking your weapon out of the box, this will allow for the horde to catch you inside that cage, and it's game over. Luckily, you get your weapon, push back the zombies until you find that ledge on the catwalk. You sprint for the teleporter, dodging the line of zombies, coming after you as you've jumped over their heads, slam on the square button to end up at the mainframe. Quiet for but a moment. Pack-a-punch ticks away as you throw your weapon in, and zombies begin respawning as you can see them pooling up in front of you as you wait, dropping from perches all around the map. Finally, you get your new weapon just before you're overrun and fight your way back to your safe spot, risking a bad spawn from a zombie to catch you, a sticky swipe, or taking a wrong turn. Getting back to the catwalk, you take your position, debating if you want to keep running, or maybe I'll hold my ground. All ready to start this process all over again. Why did that gameplay loop work more effectively than when you attempt to do the same thing in Blood of the Dead? 
Well, Blood of the Dead, you have to make sure you have a, a lot of things in order before you start getting into that gameplay loop. Make sure you build that shield, remembering all those part locations, and then use that shield to unlock Pack-a-Punch. And once you figure that out, uh, now when you want to start that fun process, you have to run around the map to find the correct location to Pack-a-Punch. And if you didn't find it guess right on your first time well for the next two minutes you're gonna be running to the next location to check and god forbid it's in the third place you check a lot of gameplay is going by then you find pack a punch finally but then you have to keep pack a punching to get decent damage onto your weapon after three or four pack a punches if you have enough money you try to travel back to your spot and you get caught in a corner but not to worry your specialist weapon blows all the zombies away for an easy escape the gameplay loop slows down due to the tedious tasks of the newer maps and the gameplay functions without the risk of game ending double swipes or getting stuck on zombies. I believe this is how the gameplay slowly becomes more of a chore than an experience. With that stated, all these additions to zombies over the years begs the question, has it given players more to do? and thus more enjoyment out of the game, or has it removed the incentives for players to get stronger in their tower defense based game? This is a fine line to walk, and it's something that is on a spectrum for players because enjoyment is subjective. But that's what we need to analyze today. We're going to figure out where that line might be to find if it's taking away the reasons to play or giving us more things to do and hopefully making the game more fun. By Black Ops 4, I believe the addition of so many tools outside the game has resulted in the erosion of replayability because there isn't a strong enough risk reward system present inside the game for players to enjoy. I find myself asking why could we play the old maps without the presence of leveling systems or the vast array of things to do in current games. I would attribute some answers to being younger when I played the older maps. Zombies having fewer maps released at that time, causing a more limited scope of experiences to draw from, and some nostalgia makes old maps fun to play even today. But that is the key. Some of these maps are still more fun to play today compared to some of the latest maps. How could that be? There is no comparison in graphics. Black Ops 4 puts all previous maps to shame with its engine, but there is a better gameplay loop in older versions. An argument can be made that a shift in focus has occurred from gameplay to story within the mode. Players are chastised by announcers for not progressing in Easter eggs as Origins did in the past. The game is literally telling players you are playing wrong in some cases in the newer maps. So what's the solution? Take everything away? Rip everything from the player's hands and make every decision an agonizing risk reward analysis? No, don't do that. That would stress out players too much and they would say the maps are too boring now. There's nothing to do. One solution I see stems back to the first episode of the series, rewards. There was a great reward for pulling off the circle strategy in Doris World at War. Every time you sat in the catwalk and jumped down, you were worried about the wall of zombies that might catch you to end your game early. Would the Wonderwaffa screw you over? Could you try to hold out by a teleporter at such a high round to make things riskier? And countless other thoughts run through your mind during this process. These aren't as tangible as rewards we see in new games, but I think the older maps allowed players to make split second decisions to change how they were playing in their current games better than any of the newer maps currently can. Comparing this assumption to later games, there end up being fewer ways to play on maps now. Players gravitate toward playing the same strategy every map, training in the same areas round to round, accidentally ending up on round 40 because there are no threats. In previous maps, normal players didn't fall backwards into round 40 without feeling the threat of everything falling apart at any moment, making the grind that much more rewarding. Depending on the iteration, uh, be a one I'm looking at you. There's an argument that, quote, players can self-handicap themselves to increase their risk in modern zombies, allowing them to have much more fun. End quote. The thought process of that argument is fair, but it doesn't hold up well when we consider how humans function. I have read the complaint that there are millions of challenges for players to try, but they won't because they refuse to. Well, that human nature problem, I believe, comes from game theory. 
no, no, not not that game theory. Actual game theory. In the science of game theory, there is something called dominant strategy. It reads as follows. In game theory, a dominant strategy is the course of actions that result in the highest payoff for a player regardless of what the other player does. Not all players in all games have dominant strategies, but when they do, they can blindly follow them. It is because a dominant strategy is the optimal strategy unconditionally. There is no dependence on the strategy the other player chooses. And that's from explained.com. Humans are built to mindlessly play the dominant strategy if it exists inside a game, which it does in zombies. Why do you always gravitate towards the optimal build when playing games? Because you want to win. If the game doesn't take away the dominant strategy from the player, you are fighting against your own instinct to win to try and have a fun time. This is why so many people don't get the argument. How about you don't use overpowered stuff? It is because players know they are handicapping themselves. Ask yourself, is it more fun to win going all out or win knowing you played with a hand tied behind your back? Obviously, there is a caveat. The feeling of wanting to use the dominant strategy differs for everyone. Some players will not even notice handicapping themselves as a problem, while others will detest it with all their heart. I attribute this difference to the sometimes toxic discourse inside the zombies community about the best zombies game or gameplay. It is completely subjective. It is an utter waste of time to try and debate somebody on which map is objectively the best ever. Some people adore movies so bad that the movie ends up good in their eyes. The same principles can apply to zombies. But that's not to say that these basic psychological philosophies don't apply. But they aren't a catch-all. So if not solely rewards as a solution, then what else could be one? I suggest putting the tools to become better back in the game. Make all those big decisions in the menus occur within the actual game, without the tediousness of a quest to slow down your progress. Old games let you change your perks on the fly by buying back, buying over, or downing yourself. Reinventing yourself halfway through a game, if you choose to, has disappeared. Leave the cosmetics to the menus. Return the tower defense formula to the gameplay to get the gameplay loop going again. Reduce the tools we start with before we jump in. I find holding your ground at each teleporter each round far more fun and risky a play than any of the play styles I can think of inside Blood of the Dead. Now players, we love getting overpowered, you love getting overpowered, but there needs to be a threat, then a way to overcome that threat, only to have a stronger threat come along in this gameplay loop to keep the fun going. Now that doesn't mean we remove everything from the game. Gobble gums were excellent ways of allowing players to play in new ways. Many of the consumables allowed for players to play in different ways, which allowed for a lot of fun. But dominant strategy takes over when players use the same four to five consumables every match on top of the same loadout, making sure they are invincible to everything before round 10 passes. There has to be a balance in order to achieve this gameplay loop of risk and reward. What do you think about the risk inside of zombies? Is it something that's important to you that the more risk you have, the more fun in zombies, it allows for more replayability? Or do you think it's something else entirely? Do you think it's a one single aspect or combination of things like artificial inflation or reward systems that also contribute toward the current slump zombies is experiencing? I think it's a combination of all three of these things. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Mainframe every friday at 4 30 p.m eastern standard time we release a new episode of the mainframe if you want to make sure you catch every single episode be sure you subscribe at this channel and leave a rating and a comment for the youtube algorithm it helps the videos do better and then we get to make more of these episodes thank you to our patrons without them none of these videos are possible so if you want to consider supporting the channel and supporting these videos go to the link in the description and follow us on patreon and maybe throw some disposable income our way at my website right now you can order ether posters they're 24 by 36 movie posters i highly recommend them and get ready the resident evil designs right resident evil 2 and 3 poster is going to go on sale march 31st 
So be excited. Get ready to pick up one of those posters if you're into Resident Evil or want another dope 24 by 36 inch poster on your walls. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had an absolute wonderful time watching this video. Be safe until I see you on the next episode of The Maze.